Hello, my name is Michael Pillinger. I'm a professor of medicine and director of the Rheumatology Fellowship Program at the NYU Langone Medical Center and Hospital for Joint Diseases. We'll begin today's session with a brief look at the pathophysiology of gout. Gout pathogenesis depends on the necessary risk factor of hyperuricemia, often defined as a serum urate level greater than 6.8 milligrams per deciliter, although I should note that at least as many patients have hyperuricemia without overt disease. Let's consider some of the factors that control serum urate levels. Uric acid is a normal end product of the physiologic turnover of nucleic acids, more specifically of purine metabolism. Levels of circulating urate are determined by dietary purine intake, cellular degradation of purines to urate by the enzyme xanthine oxidase, and the rate at which urate is excreted from the body. Normally, urate excretion is performed largely through the intestines and the kidneys, with the latter responsible for 60 to 70% of the total uric acid removed from the body each day. Serum uric acid concentrations in healthy individuals vary between 3.5 and 6.5 milligrams per deciliter, with women showing slightly lower levels than men. The high end of this range approaches the threshold for urate saturation in biologic fluids, or roughly 7 milligrams per deciliter. Thus, disruptions in the delicately balanced processes governing urate homeostasis can elevate circulating levels above the saturation point which can promote nucleation and growth of monosodium urate crystals in joints and in other tissues. Urate crystals, once formed, induce direct inflammatory responses and are phagocytosed by macrophages and neutrophils to stimulate pro-inflammatory cytokine production. The initial clinical manifestation is painful, self-limiting joint inflammation, which in long-standing disease is followed by chronic inflammation erosive joint damage, and ongoing pain. A number of factors can contribute to persistently elevated serum urate levels. These include overconsumption of purine-rich foods, uric acid overproduction, and inadequate uric acid excretion. In about 90% of patients with gout, the primary issue is inadequate renal uric acid excretion. As you know, the kidneys play an integral role in determining the composition of circulating blood, including pH, electrolyte concentrations, water content, and, central to our discussion today, urate levels. These parameters are regulated by renal filtration, reabsorption, and secretion of water and small solutes, all of which are carried out in the nephron the structural and functional unit of the kidney. The nephron consists of a capillary network called the glomerulus and a tubular system in which substances either are reabsorbed from the glomerular filtrate or retained in the tubules where they're collected as waste products to be eliminated in the urine. Blood that enters the glomerulus is under relatively high pressure, which forces water, salts, and other small metabolites to filter out of the capillaries and into the surrounding space known as Bowman's capsule. The filtrate then passes through the proximal tubule, the loop of Henle, and the distal tubule before leaving the nephron and entering the collecting duct system. Like other small metabolites, uric acid is removed from circulating blood via glomerular filtration, after which approximately 90% is net reabsorbed in the proximal tubule. The primary transporters responsible for the tubular reabsorption of uric acid are urate anion exchanger 1, or urat 1, facilitative glucose transporter 9, or GLUT9, and members of the organic acid transporter family, including OAT4, or OAT4. Urat 1 is highly urate specific and is located on the luminal membrane of the proximal tubular epithelial cells, whereas GLUT9 is a voltage-driven urate transporter found on the basolateral membrane, where it mediates the transfer of the urate out of the tubular cells and back into the circulation. Because gout depends on excess circulating urate, management often relies on decreasing the plasma urate levels. Indeed, most patients with gout 
will eventually require long-term treatment with urate-lowering therapy, both to prevent new crystal formation and to reverse any chronic urate crystal deposition that has occurred. Successful treatment will eventually result in prevention of recurrent flares and permanent joint damage. Among the urate-lowering medications, the most commonly prescribed agents are xanthine oxidase inhibitors, such as allopurinol and febuzostat, which interfere with urate synthesis in the liver. Other approaches, the so-called uricose-uric agents, seek to enhance renal excretion of uric acid, primarily by inhibiting urat-1, interfering with urate reuptake in the proximal tubule, and therefore increasing urate excretion in the urine. During the rest of today's session, you will examine best practices in gout diagnosis, as well as the evidence for current and emerging treatment options. Thanks for your time, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your program.